Hi, my name is Allison Yates. I'm the Associate Director of High School Abroad and Short-Term Programs at Greenheart Travel. I'm Kara, I'm a Senior Program Manager at Greenheart Travel, and I taught English in Thailand through Greenheart Travel. I'm Kate, um, I'm the Teach Abroad Coordinator at Greenheart Travel, and I also taught in Thailand through Greenheart Travel. I visited Thailand, but I haven't taught there or lived there. Did like you both visit there? I don't yeah. think I knew that. Yeah, quite a few times. Oh. Three or oh. four. Oh! Uh -huh. But I don't know it as intricately as you do. You know? Yeah. I like to hear your stories in the office, so we're going to ask a, a few questions. So okay, first, great. where did you teach? How old were your students? And then I'll go from there. I taught in central Thailand. It was like two hours away from Bangkok. Um, it was in a province called Nakompatong. And my students were fifth grade through twelfth grade, which for not U.S. people is like 11 years old to 19 years old. 11 to 19? Mm -hmm. Wide range. Yes. I taught in Renong. Um, it's technically in the southern area of Thailand, but it's like right in the skinniest part of the country. And I taught kindergarten for a semester and then I moved on to third grade for the rest of the time that I was there. So many questions just came up. I'm going to ask you a lot of detailed questions, but first, give me a 30 second blurb of your entire experience. Your elevator speech about Thailand. <laughs> okay. okay, I'm nervous. <laughs> Um, okay, I tell people that it was amazing. I, it's hard to describe, like it's... Yeah. Well, we'll get into the nitty-gritty. You know, it wasn't a vacation, like, it's hard to like sum up a experience like, like a that. a year of your life. Right. Right. I tell people also that it was amazing, <laughs> but that it was also extremely very, very hard. Teaching is very hard in a way that I stupidly didn't realize. I got there after like two weeks of teaching, I was like, oh, there's a reason people have to go to school for four or five years to become teachers. Right. And I just like went into it being like, well, I know a bunch of people who have done this. How hard can it be? What was something about the town that you loved? There's this uh, temple that's like this round cylindrical, I don't even know how many stories it is, but you can see it. It just like dominates the skyline because there's nothing else in the skyline. And it has a giant dragon wrapped around it. And it's really cool. And actually a couple teachers have gone there like that they've posted about it on Instagram. So I think it's starting to become like a cool thing so to go to. destination? Yeah. The town I was in, again, our province and city was Renong. Um, one really cool thing about it is, um, I mean, cool depending on how you view this, but um, it's the rainiest province in Thailand. <laughs> yeah, I can so... see why that'd be a, a maybe or a not. <laughs> the monsoon season there like technically lasts for like eight months. Oh. Not, it doesn't my. really, but their thing is like, Eight, their slogans that they put on all their t-shirts is like 8-4, which is like four months of the year are sunny and then eight <laughs> months of the year are rainy. Um, but it's right on the border of Myanmar and right where Myanmar ends. So there's like a river that separates Renong and Myanmar and you can just like go up on the mountains and like look across the river and see Myanmar. It's really cool. I actually have a question because yes. I did not live in Thailand during the rainy season. And when people, <clears throat> people always ask me the question of like, what is it like living there in the rainy season? Is it like downpour for an hour? And then it's done or is it like days and days and days? No, it's like days. Like okay. there were like, there was the time when I hadn't seen the sun in like two weeks. Wow. <laughs> Eight and... for life. <laughs> Woo! So sometimes when people think about going to Thailand, they might think of the most popular destinations like Bangkok or Phuket. So when people ask you, can I be placed in Phuket? What would you say to them? Or what do you say to them? There's so many cool places in Thailand and you can always go visit Phuket or you can always go visit Bangkok or you can always go visit Chiang Mai but like it's such a unique experience to be able to go someplace that you wouldn't go yourself. Also Phuket is very expensive and so is Chiang Mai and so is Bangkok but Phuket's like very 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 expensive. Yeah. So like why would you want to stretch out your salary even more? I think the other thing is it's really easy to um, not dive into your community when you're in bigger places like that because you can easily find like an expat community or it's just bigger um, and it's kind of easy to get lost. Like I think you have to make more of an effort to really get more out of your experience if you're yeah. in places like that. That's yeah, a that's a good, good point. point. Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> what are the challenges that you faced? I think my biggest challenge was just like the first week of teaching. I was so overwhelmed and I was kind of like, what? Why did I think I could do this? <laughs> I didn't even have like, I didn't even really like kids going in. And I was like, this was so stupid of me. <laughs> I just remember being like really, I don't know, like angry at myself mm -hmm. after school every day. I was so frustrated that it turned into anger and I would just like stew in my room. Like, why did I do this? Um, and I had to, yeah, like really kind of reach out to other people and be like, how do I get around this? Like, what's the best tactic for like coming up with ways to connect with my class and mm -hmm. plan certain lessons and like come up with a system that like makes everything flow. And so that was like 
a lot of effort on my part and I easily could have not put in the effort and then just had a horrible time. Every <laughs> once in a while, that first class that I taught pops into my head and it gives me <laughs> such anxiety. It was, my, <laughs> it was my fifth grade class and I, and I was, wait, they, were, they hadn't gotten there yet and I just like wrote my name on the board and then I just like paced like this. I was just like wringing my hands. I'm like, oh no, how's this gonna go? Yeah. But a lot of it too is because you're living in such a different place. Like Thailand is so different from um, the US where we're from. And I had been to Japan for like a week. Other than that, I didn't like, Thailand was like the most different culture I'd been in. So not only it's like new job jitters, right. and you're, not, you're not really sure what you're doing. You don't have the hang of it yet, but like, you're also dealing with all the other aspects of culture shock. And so yeah. like, frustration can turn into anger very easily. Yeah. <laughs> you're just like frustrated with yourself. Cause you're like, I can't talk to anybody. I don't know what anything is. But it's funny now no, to yeah. think about it. Why did both of you want to go abroad in the first place? What drew you to Thailand or to teach? I didn't get to study abroad in high school or college. Just financially wasn't in the cards for me. Um, and I had studied French in school. And so there's like the Spanish auxiliary program equivalent in France. Um, that was my plan to do after graduation and I got rejected for the program because <laughs> oh, I know <laughs> I think their rejection rate is pretty it's high. It's really high. So it kind of took me a while to like come around to being open to some place that wasn't the language I'd been studying. And honestly, I went to Thailand because I was like, oh, it's not a full year commitment. Mm. That's great. Yeah. I couldn't even point out Thailand to you on a map before I went, if I'm being completely honest. I graduated college and I went into this job that was like super boring. I was marketing. <laughs> I was marketing for a company that makes bearings. I knew I wanted to live abroad and I didn't know how to make money and do that. Um, so I just did some research and I realized that like getting your TEFL certification was kind of the easiest way to do that if you're entry level, like nobody else is going to sponsor a work visa for you. I was leaning into Spanish speaking countries because mm -hmm. that's what I had studied. Um, but I think I chose Thailand because it had the best like income to um, like living cost ratio mm -hmm. um, that I found. I mean, obviously there's other countries that have better, but yeah. Um, Actually, I wanted to ask you about that. What was it like living off? So the average salary for teachers is around 30 Thai baht? 30,000, 30, 30, 30, sorry. 30,000 30, 30, Thai baht. Meal. One meal a month. <laughs> what was that like? It was fine. I, um, I mean, I also tutored on the side. I don't know if you did that. Mm -mm. Um, so like the money I made in tutoring went towards like my basic like rent and my motorbike and stuff like that so everything i made outside of tutoring was just like mine to do whatever i wanted with i think i traveled probably like once a month and then i saved up for like the summer break that you get and traveled around thailand with some friends then um, so you saved money from that salary to travel yeah within i mean thailand. the cost of traveling around the country is cheap it's very cheap you've also talked about how both of you were not teachers before you went abroad mm -hmm. so and you both had kind of like Oh my God, moments. <laughs> what surprised you about teaching once you got into the swing of it? Kids are kids anywhere in the world. And if you're teaching little kids, they're gonna, like your classrooms are gonna be kind of chaotic at times. It's like hurting kittens with a feather. I kind of went to Thailand almost directly after I graduated. It was like six months after I graduated. Um, and I don't know if you guys like remember being in school, but you just never saw a kid ever. Like, yes. you just, just remember that, like, yes. being on campus and you're like, wow, I haven't seen a kid in, like, years. Yeah. I just feel like yeah. that was, like, <laughs> something you just never ran into. And so, honestly, I didn't even think about that. And then all of a sudden I was just, like, surrounded by so many kids and I didn't really know what to do. And like I said, I didn't even really like kids before I went or just hadn't, like, connected. There was just no experience. I love no your experience. plan. <laughs> <laughs> this is a well really thought well thought out, out plan. <laughs> I don't know where this country is. I don't like kids. <laughs> Let's be a teacher. Let's go. <laughs> um, but I think the most like shocking thing for me was just like how much I like bonded with my students. I had like a really unique experience. I had I taught a full English immersion program, so I taught my students all day, every day, math, science, English, art, gym, all in English. Would the parents come up to you after class or? put pressure on you to be a certain way or teach a certain way to their kids? The parents were I, paying more money for their students to be in this full English program. So there were a couple parents that were like, you know, my student's not doing well and I'm paying money to like have them in this class. Just like parents regular parents do here. Yeah. 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 Um, but for the most part, they were just very like ch chill. Okay. So now that you're both 
program managers at Green Heart Travel, I have a couple questions about what you would have done differently or how you see things from this perspective now. I would have found the most comprehensive, intensive TESOL certification course that I could and like invested in it. I took a really cheap online course before I went because again, I was very naive and I was like, well, I know so-and-so has done it and this person who's done it, how hard can it be? So is that something you would have done differently? Mm -hmm. I probably would have just opted to take the course in Thailand. Yeah, instead. I took it and yeah. I thought it was great because it's taught by people that have taught in Thailand. So they know the school systems, they know what students are interested in. Like they were like students at this time right now really love SpongeBob or whatever. So incorporate that into your lessons. Like they really knew like what the students would latch on to. Mm -hmm. They like would show us music that the students were liking that year. I mean that was all super helpful because then I could just make like add those fun elements into my lesson plans that aren't necessarily things that like kids in the US are interested in, mm -hmm. you know. As a like behind the scenes now, I feel like I would do better research into what I was bringing. I definitely overpacked, but then didn't pack right. And a lot of my stuff, I was in like the monsoon area. So a lot of my stuff got like moldy and destroyed. Um, also like wasn't right for school. Like, I mean, it was professional clothes, but when I got there, I was like, oh my God, everything's sticky and human. And I brought like pencil skirts. Like I'm not wearing a pencil skirt yeah. to school. So I'd have to go to like the secondhand shops there and buy like flowy long skirts. Like I had to rebuy basically everything that I wore there. Um, so I think I would just look into, I would do a better job of like really determining what I needed and don't need and then pack probably half of what I brought. Kara and Kate, thank you so much for joining me today on the Green Heart Travel Podcast. Yeah. Thanks for being great resources for everyone. Hope we convince you specifically to go teach in Thailand. Actually, I really want to go teach in Thailand now. <laughs> Do it. I know a couple people. <laughs>